Ahora vamos con las reglas del juego. Cada candidato tendrá tres minutos para contestar la pregunta de este debate. La pregunta será... ¿Qué, ¿Qué hará en sus primeros 100 días como alcalde de Harper? Every candidate is going to have three minutes to answer the main question today. What will you do in your first 100 days as mayor of Hartford? Let me see. Well, I like to look at the people in the back. Acknowledge them. And I got a special heart for camera people, so camera people rock. First 100 days. Now, I've been quoted for the past, what, 12 years of running as everyone that works for the pleasure of the mayor needs to look for a new job. But that would be reckless and irresponsible, so certainly I wouldn't fire everybody. But everyone would have to apply because we do not want to destabilize the city nor do we want to send out a shockwave to everyone who's currently running thinking that they may become unemployed at the end of the election. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a convocation, two-day convocation, where we bring together every single city employee. The city is going to absorb the cost of them attending the convocation. We'll have this either at the uh, convention center, I was going to say civic center, but the convention center is probably a a better venue for that. And we're going to talk about realigning the city to be in line with my six-point plan to realign the city's priorities. They're in this little flyer that I handed out to everybody. Turn your cell phone off, please. The, the, um, there we go. <laughs> All right. Technology, what do you want? What we'll do is we'll have that convocation and we'll realign our six-point plan. If you go over that, you'll see that the number one thing we need to do in this city is make our youth the number one priority for everyone in this city, whether it's a bodega, whether it's a store, whether it's a bus driver, school, doesn't matter what it is. Our, our kids have to be our first priority. And that goes along with uh, education. So we're going to have a convocation with our teachers as well. Secondly, we have a city that is outside of communications. We got silos. Nobody communicates with one another. So communication is going to be a key factor in bringing the city together. And then, of course, working outside of silos so that we bring people together to work together. Fourth in our priorities is public safety. I think we can all say that we have a public safety issue. The current administration ran on saying that Hartford was the most dangerous city in New England, murder capital of New England. I don't know if any of you remember that, but they're suddenly silent now when things are the same. We have to change the culture within our city. And in order to do that, we have to come together as a complete city. I've always said that the answers for Hartford are right here in Hartford. They're in this room. No one listens to you all. That's the problem. I'm applying to become your mayor. That means I'm going to work for you. If I should be fortunate enough to get the job, it'll be because you saw fit to put me there. So you're going to be a key part of that. Maybe you're part of an NRZ. If you're not, you need to join. Maybe you're part of the town committee, our first line of elected officials. These are the people who should be really contributing to our final vision. So when we hire our next police chief, because he is absolutely going to be fired. When we hire our next police chief, all of you all have to be part of that. We'll finish this later. Thank you. Thank you to all the candidates. We're getting ready to take a three minute break before we move on to our next round. Como madres estamos preocupadas por las pandillas y las drogas en la calle. Ahora que la marihuana es legal, el olor es insoportable. ¿Qué hará usted para asegurar la calidad de vida de las familias y la juventud? 
As mothers, we are concerned about gangs and drugs on the street. Now that cannabis is legal, the smell is unbearable. How can you ensure the quality of life for families and youth now? That's a great question. Uh, these are some of the issues we have when we legalize substances such as marijuana or whatever else. Uh, but it is legal, and so we as a community are going to have to find a way to have areas where people can smoke. Uh, I remember once upon a time when companies had uh, smoking areas, and you'd, you'd come out of, the, out of your office building, and everybody would be all huddled up in a little cubicle, because you could only smoke in that little five by five box, and then it became socially unacceptable to smoke. Now, it's socially acceptable to smoke marijuana anywhere, everywhere. So I think this is gonna have to have some time to kind of like normalize, and once that does, I think we'll do fine. But until then, these are critical issues that may be part of the unintended consequences. The uh, other issues are as a matter of, of enforcement. Uh, if we change the way we do policing, where the community actually polices itself and the law enforcement's officers are there to enforce the laws as the community sees fit, I think we'll change that dynamic. Part of what I was talking about earlier in terms of uh, you know, public safety and community development, um, economic and community development, community development is part of that. And we have to become a city that respects one another where we are more interested in how my neighbor feels than how I feel at my neighbor's expense. It can be done. Hartford's a small enough town that everybody knows one another when you see everybody out on the street. Oh, I seen him last week. Who does he think he is? He ain't done. If we know people like that, then we can also get to know and respect one another. It's gonna take us becoming a city that values the city, that values our communities so that we can actually move forward as one Hartford. She would like to know with all of the crime that's happening particularly among youth, what is the plan to address that? That a lot of these issues around crime are mental health issues and as such many of the mental health programs are not functioning and so we have this, this crime. So what, what is the intention of the person that answered? Stan McCoy. Uh, once again, we need to come together as a community. But when you're talking about our youth, and you talk about impact, um, you talk about the nonprofit industrial complex, uh, what we're seeing with our youth, with violence, is a, it's a, it's a public health issue. A lot of people process it as a crime issue because there's criminal dollars to fight crime. So in a poor city like Harvard, it becomes a fundraising mechanism. We talk about people in Glastonbury. The reason they don't have a lot of nonprofits is because they come to work in Hartford at the nonprofits at six figure dollars, six figure salaries. And then they go back to Centenary Avon. And so we become the means to an end. I've said this many times, maybe new to some of you. We don't have to pick cotton because we are the cotton. And that's going to continue until you and Hartford say you've had enough. So until we see the people, as someone said, okay, it's just out, as having value to where we begin to reach out to them. Dr. Sakata said to me, you know, Sam, there's a reason why we can't hire the people that we need to hire because there's a lot of mental health issues in the city which make them unemployed. Mm -hmm. Well, he knew that, and he's not the first to understand that. <clears throat> Plenty of people know us, but where's the intentionality to solving the problem? So the path to, path to impact can't be the program. The path to impact has to be those impacted by said program. The programs we have now by anybody's definition in this room, is not working. Until you hire somebody to be your boss, 
not your boss, to be the boss of the people who are doing the work. Thank you. And nothing's going to change. Thank you. That's it. Thank you. All right. So the question is around homelessness <laughs> and the fact that homelessness is affecting negatively the, the, the businesses that exist in the city of Hartford. And what she's saying is that what she's seeing is a revolving door. They come out, they go back in, and it starts all over again. Well, and she owns a business, right? She owns a business, and so this is a constant problem. She tries her best to be able to solve that problem. She tries to help them. She sees them go in, and they come back out. So the question is around homelessness, and I'll conclude with this. So, Councilman, I'm going to interrupt for a minute. So everyone knows the question. Everyone knows the translation. To be heard to all of the candidates, please give the mic to everyone for one minute answer from everyone. The under homes, the homeless, the chronically homeless. I hear a lot of things in there and we can talk about this ad nauseum for a long time. But her problem that I think I understood is the situation that's happening here. And that is something that, believe it or not, can be solved if there's some intentionality around it. We might start with actually having the conversation with the people who are going to be impacted by the problem. We talk about the homeless as though they are something out there, and we're going to make the decisions for them. They actually are human beings with wants, needs, aspirations, and desires. And if you talk to them, you would be shocked at their solutions to the problem. Like I keep saying, the problems that we're going to have can be solved by the people that actually live in the city. Our job, my job, is to help you bring what you see as a solution to a manifestation. I bet you we get the homeless person, we get her and her fellow business people together, we can come up with a solution. Yes. And under the home administration, that's what you will have. I hand to each of you almost each of you, a uh, little insert that's in the for news. It's the path to impact. All right, if you go to my website, callingformayor.com, you can read it. If you write this phone number down, 860-944-9797, that is my cell phone number, has been for at least the last 12 years. If you call me, I will come over and we can have coffee and chop it up. I'm applying to work for you. All of us are applying to work for you. It's your government. The question is, are you willing to do your part in holding accountable us? This has to go beyond rhetoric and campaign speeches. It has to go to who's willing to do the job for you. All right? You got to do your part and get out and vote. That's why I'm running again for the fourth time, because I have yet to win. I haven't lost. You lose. Yeah, I'm trying to lose. <laughs> the bad. Why can't we do better? That's a question only you can answer. I mean, answer, you can do it September the 12th when you vote for Jay Stan McCall. Tracy.